Oh, good morning. Oh, I'm just having a quick look and see. Yeah, everything's working. Oh dear, I had a late night last night. And I'm going away. So I've decided to try and put some sort of CCTV camera thing in at home. And uh, data. Data is the new bottleneck. To view a CCTV camera on, a, on the average household network, it just completely overwhelms it. it uh, and it's, I'm feeling overwhelmed by data. That's, you know, <laughs> in more ways than one, I'm getting overwhelmed by data. I'm getting overwhelmed because this, my phone couldn't cope with the throughput, could it? We couldn't record 20 minutes of just someone talking and and video at the same time. So that's been oh, I swamped by the data. And then I get this fantastic camera, which at least is a dedicated camera. And but because it's a 360-degree camera, it's it's swamped. Well, it's not swamped, but I mean. I then have to edit the video and these videos are just growing ridiculously you know I mean I mean I know if you're going to do video editing you need to have a f off computer you you have to you know you have to have the, I, I've never I've been in computers my entire life and the sweet spot for computers is about two thousand pounds it doesn't matter whether it's a 386 a 486 or uh, an i3 or an i whatever the new thing out was if you wanted one that was any good at all the price point was two thousand pounds that's what you had to pay two thousand pounds and then of course the now nowadays pcs are not so popular are they they're on the wane they're not waxing they're waning and so that produces two things first of all the uh means that the price comes down because there's there's intense competition over the last dregs of the market you know the people who the, the few people are still buying PCs if you want to sell PCs you've got to you've got to appeal to these people and the way they do that is just by cutting prices to the bone foreign call centers lack of support forget return to base repairs you know just no nothing and um, or uh, just uh, move into a different market, you know, market segmentation. Forget the guy who, uh, you know, you, has got the PC on the dining room table or the kitchen table or upstairs in the spare bedroom. Just move into business, just do business servers, business client terminals and things like that. And um, it means that you've got two choices, you know, you, you've either got to up, upgrade to a business you're going up to a business computer or you're going you know you're or you're just going to buy a rubbish computer which is not really what I'm in the market for I think there's a big diver diversity a, a divergence or a, a, what's the word I'm looking for a big, there's a big gap now opened up between content creators and content consumers that didn't really exist everyone was a creator and a consumer at the same time in the same way as you send emails and receive emails but now it's more about the receiving isn't it because everyone who wants to be is a TV channel everyone else can tune in and uh, most you know I mean perhaps a lot of people who watch this have never made a YouTube video or, or probably never will and never wanted to you know or never needed to <laughs> so there's been no advantage to it there's no advantage to me I, I, I don't know what do you think I get out of this nothing because I put in nothing that I do it you know, you don't, why would you do something out of which you get nothing unless you're putting nothing in this is dead time for me I'm just driving to work and talking which is hardly a massive opportunity cost I suppose I could be talking to someone else but I don't want to I want to talk to you anyway so where were we data yeah data it's just you know I'm going to have to put in a hardwired IP category 6 cable god knows what at home just to cope with a few uh, cameras and then 
when you've got the cameras up and you can look through the cameras and that's all fantastic and then and then uh, you've got to think to yourself well okay what do I do you know do I record all the time in case something happens or do I try and have to fiddle about with motion detection so that the motion detection picks something up or who is this idiot that's driving behind me doesn't know he's on doesn't know he's on YouTube does he he's too cool for school isn't he with these shades uh, he was hoping to overtake me on this long straight bit but that car coming the other way is a sort of scuppered his plan so I bet he's fuming Anyway, I'm not driving slowly anyway. So, where am I? Yeah, so uh, I've got to, got to get the whole house wired up. And then you have to do motion detection and then you have to do... Because uh, motion detect, one pixel changes and the whole blooming... And it sends you an email with a 400 kilobyte video file saying, you know, uh, we've picked up some some motion in your fountain outside in your garden so I don't think you'll I don't know when you'll see this video because the I downloaded yesterday's video and uh, tried to edit it and then in trying to render it the rendering program crashed so we're such early stages in such an early stage I mean Everybody's saying, oh yeah, you know, our computer's wonderful. They're not, they're rubbish, they're absolute rubbish. And if you're at the bleeding edge of a technology as I am, usually, just because I'm a bit of a gadget, technophile gadget freak, then you you have to put up with all of this, you know? You have to put up with, I was, I was mucking about with my um, uh, x-ray system yesterday one of our dentists in the lives in the United States so we have to send data to him and when I bought the practice I said to him you know look this data's got to be encrypted it's all patients information and stuff like that and he's like oh no, no no who cares you know who cares he said the patients I said we need to talk to the patient through some sort of encrypted thing because we can't you know a lot of them just uh, come in and say oh can you uh, you know, can I have my patient records? And then they say, uh, oh, I'll drop in a USB, you can stick it on a USB stick. And we're like, no, we won't, no, we can't. We don't stick strange USB sticks in our USB ports. And uh, and then we export it all, and the uh, notes we export as a PDF, and the uh, x-rays we export as a DICOM. Now, I must admit, initially I didn't like CDR DICOMs either. They, I didn't. The, the last thing you want, like the last thing you want, is another bloody format, isn't it? To for the exchange of data. I mean, have we not got enough file types without having a, a special file type for X-rays? I mean, why not have a special file type for pictures of fields? Why not or pictures of anything that's green? You know, I mean, can could the X-ray fraternity not please just fit in with the photographers and the pornographers and just get <laughs> use an existing file type? They're like, oh no, 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 we've got to put down the, we've got to group the studies together. We've got to have the patient's name on there. We've got a patient's date of birth. We've got to have a field for the patient's date of birth. Oh, right, okay, well, you know, it may come as a surprise to you, but all that has already been fixed. Oh, there he goes. And he's off. He's stupid, really, though, because this road, the, the most you can go on this road is, is about 80. And, and everything could do 80. You know, not just him, although he may have the loudest exhaust. Yeah, so what? So I always export the uh, X-rays in in DICOM. Uh, no fuel. So uh, you know, because that's you know, you <laughs> you can't get into trouble exporting them as a DICOM. You cannot. And if you know, if later the patient makes a complaint and says. 
I asked for the x-rays and he didn't fail, uh, you know, he failed to comply with the requirements of the Data Protection Act because he didn't supply them in a format that was easily accessible to me, then you have to be able to say, look, I gave them in a DICOM format, it's recognised worldwide for interchange of x-rays, where's your, what's your major malfunction? And the major malfunction is that most people have not got a clue what to do with a DICOM file. They're not, they're not, they don't work in IT and networking or databases. <laughs> they don't, you know, most people can't cope with a zip file, let alone a DICOM file. So I'm saying, I'm saying, you know, send this American dentist the x-rays encrypted, well, not encrypted, but just, you know, as a DICOM file for format, transfer format, which you can then read in to your x-ray program and there are plenty of free DICOM viewers on the internet because it's an international standard micro micro DICOM viewer or micro DICOM I think I might put the link in the notes is is a good um, if I don't put the link in the notes it's because it's you know I've been it's been two weeks since I've got this video going so if you want the link and you can't find it by googling it then then let me know but you just then you can then import the thing and the, the x-rays but you know they don't for all of the technical wizardry behind the DICOM format nobody uses it you know you get <laughs> you get send someone off to the QEQM hospital for a, an x-ray and do they send it to you via some secure channel no what do they do they blow it onto a CD onto a CD for Christ's sake as it's a little silver thing that you tie together with bits of string and dangle in your windows to make a nice little light, you know, to reflect the sunlight in the morning and wake you up. That's what a CD is. And they they, they waste a CD by, by putting a tiny bit of data on it. And then they, uh, they give it to the patient. And the patient then has to transport it physically back to the practice where we have to maintain one PC with a CD reader. No PCs have got CD QEQM, no PCs have got CD readers anymore. We have to keep a, we have to keep a computer especially with a CD reader so that we can read these ruddy CDs in. And what do we get? When we read it in, it just disappears. Mr. Mr. The X-ray for Mr. A Anonymous, date taken 1st of January 1980 just disappears into the system because our system got no way of classifying it, marrying it up with the patient whose CD it is. So the only way I can get this ruddy x-ray off the disc is by searching for, for, for all x-rays that are taken in the last week or so. That's assuming that the patient's brought it in within a week or so. And then I can then, it then comes up as, I say, oh, it's Mr. Anonymous. And then I have to merge Mr. Anonymous's records into the patient's records and that's by looking them up finding out what their unique unique identifying number is and then finding them and then remembering you have to click on one because the one you click on is the one that disappears after the merge so if you click if you click the wrong one and then merge them then you end up with all the patient's records under anonymous and oh it's you know why can't they just send me a png why can they not just email me a PNG? Why can't they not put dentists on NHS net? What's wrong with, what's wrong? What is so bloody precious about NHS net that they won't put dentists on it? How long is it since they set up NHS net and said they were gonna put all the doctors on it and put all the doctors and all the hospitals on it and then and none of the dentists? What are we gonna do? What, how are we gonna F it up if they put the dentists on NHS net? I mean, I'm sure you've had this experience where you've you've communicated with someone, whether it's the local commissioning authority or the community dental trust or uh, community, community dental services or someone in secondary care, and they say, you know, uh, what's your NHS net address? And you're like, no, we don't, we don't. Unless you're a very, very favoured son, you know, unless you know someone or you're, uh, you're, you're, you're the, or Richmond House is smiling upon you in some way, if you're a, you know, benefiting, if you're a recipient of their beneficence, then you may have an NHS, because you're participating in a trial, 
either are you overt or covert or whatever you know then they might deign to put you on NHS net and they'll probably jump you off again as soon as you uh, cease to cooperate but you know but you know, I mean what's the big deal why can't we have access to their to their super secret NHS thing because I, I have to refer people in secondary care because you know once I get the x-ray back then what I have to do is um Send, I then have to put it on. I then have to send it off to our online referral service. Oh dear! What? What a honestly, what a struggle! And so, you know, if you're watching this years in the future, then just please just know what a day-to-day -day struggle it was in the early days of IT. Just when nothing, nothing was joined up, nothing. When computers didn't understand you, when they were completely stupid, when they were completely dumb, when when the sort of the equivalent era of when everyone was going round getting um, uh, photographs with a black uh, black cloth over their head and uh, camera obscura using silver salts to try and develop the images, you know, they, uh, this is where we are. We uh, everything you can imagine that should work will work one day it will work you know one day it will all work in the way that we beyond our wildest imaginations it will all work you know unless the economic economic chaos depend, descends upon the uh, the world and it becomes apparent that this is a golden age of wealth based on printed money that the likes of which we'll never see again I need a holiday. Do you think I need a holiday? <laughs> I think I need a holiday. I honestly think I do. I'm going to go on holiday tomorrow. I'm going to cancel the times, um, you know, for a week. Because you can cancel the times for a week. But I've already cancelled the times. So basically they're going to get annoyed because I'm going to cancel them for a week before I've cancelled them. Which will put the cancellation back a week. So, but why not? I don't know, you know. If you can do something easy and, and quite petty to annoy someone, I think in general you should do it. Uh, so anyway, today we've got, you know, this is a classic example today of how the private sector has become the new National Health Service. We've got, uh, we weren't booked up and now, now we've booked up the week as usual. You know, you're living on the edge, the knife edge of private practice. A knife edge of self-employment and uh, entrepreneurialism, and uh, but no, but we're we're booked up as we always are. You know, I never on a Monday morning I'm get the rope out and throw it over the old beam and turn it into a noose, and then uh, on uh, on Friday I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to have to take some more time off because I, I can't work this hard. So two patients coming in one who's got some sort of medical condition which means that they can't lie back and another one who uh, whose boyfriend has, needs to have two wisdom teeth out and we'll, we'll probably do that free of charge our checkup is free of charge any x-rays we take are free of charge uh, our full uh, report the initial report is free of charge uh, we send them over to QEQM for one of the x-rays that I've just been describing that's free of charge and then they bring it back, we put them on the system, we do an in-house referral online for extraction of wisdom teeth to the local MOS provider, that's free of charge. So there we are. And that, and I'll tell you what, they are gonna get a darn sight better service off of us than they have had trying to get it off the National Health Service because the reason that they have come to us is because they have rung around every single NHS dentist in the area and they cannot even get a look in. Nobody nobody even wants to know them. You know? So there they are, pro, pro bono work on private, but only made possible by private patients, by private dentists, you know, doing what's necessary, dealing with the real, the edge cases, the desperate, the urgent, the needy, on in the private sector. Free of charge. The woman with the neck thing, I don't know what we're going to do, because I don't, I'm, I'm, for moral and ethical grounds, I don't charge people more just because they have problems receiving treatment if it's a genuine need. I don't see why they should, um, you know, 
I'm not, I'm not going to charge her double just because she'll probably take double the time in the chair. But on the other hand, I think, you know, and she'll have to realise, and I'm sure she probably does, is that there, there's a limit to the sort of treatment that you can receive sitting upright or with me standing up anyway you know she's not going to get any complex crown and bridge work let's put it that way so uh, anyway all right so that's my challenges for today but today's the last day of work so uh, there might not be another one of these till next week and there might not be any of these at all until i get my data problems sorted out and get a bigger pipe i need a fatter pipe that's what i need right nice to talk to you see you soon bye